Good morning, family, and welcome to another online service of Redeemer One House Ministry on the YouTube channel. For this is truly the day our Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And we know from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same that our God is worthy to be praised. Again, good morning, family, and welcome to another one of our online service on the YouTube channel. For here at Redeemer One House Ministry, our mission is simple, to convey to all of God's children that His sovereignty is still sufficient, that His grace and mercy is still afforded us, and that His holy word is still alive and true. We are an inclusive ministry. We stand firm on what's written throughout this love story called the Bible, that if anyone shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And with that, this morning, family, would you pray with me, please? Oh, Father God, we come to you once again with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanking you for another day of rise and shine, O oh Lord. Thanking you a day of forgiveness of our sins with new mercy and new grace that has been afforded to us. And O oh Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord, just requesting and asking, O oh Lord, that if you would just heal our land, heal our lands and heal the bodies and heal the spirits for all of those, O oh Father God, right now who are just uh, needing to hear from you, Lord. We're asking you, oh, Father God, if you'll just continue just to show up and show us signs of your sovereignty and your deity, Lord. We give you thanks today, Father. We thank you for covering us all of last week. We thank you for that, that coverage, that, 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 that secret place in your tabernacle, oh, God, that, that you protected our families and you protected our children, oh, Father God. And we thank you, Lord. So we come to you again this morning, God, on this day of Sabbath to give you all the worship, to give you all the praise, and to give you all the glory. Father God, if you will just extend a hand and, and bless those of our local and city leaders and our state leaders and our federal leaders, oh God, give them the hand of wisdom, God, so that they could be used to navigate us uh, in the storm that we're in, God. And then, oh Lord, it goes without saying that we just can't thank you enough for what you did and you sent your son at the cross to do on our behalves. So, oh Father God, we thank you, Lord, and we worship you today, oh Father God, in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning again, family. I am so excited uh, to bring a word before you today. Uh, I'm going to be reading this morning from uh, the book of Exodus. Reading this morning from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 11 through 20. And I'm reading from the NIV Bible version. For it says, The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites, to them at the twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening the quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need, take an omar for each other that you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told, 
some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the Omar, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until the morning. But it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Uh, family, this morning God has placed a subject on my spirit. Lord, what is it? This morning he's placed this, this question of subject on my spirit. Lord, what is it? Brothers and sisters, I, in the meditation over this word, I did my best as I possibly could to try to Understand how could I give God all the glory that he deserves by coming up with a word, being able to coin a phrase that I could use as a depiction of what he is in my life. I sat there and I tried to be as, as a, 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 a enduring of reading and understanding to try to coin something, to try to, to, try to, to come up with something this morning that would, would, would even bring my level of intelligence and understanding to what God is in my life. Now, brothers and sisters, I know that you're, this morning, you're, you're asking yourself that same question. Because you, you know who he is. You know he's Alpha and he's Omega. You know that he is Savior, Redeemer, and Eternal Salvation. You know that he is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha. You know that he is the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, Mary's baby. You know that he is the, the one you can call on in the, the midnight hour. You know that he is a, a, is a friend when you have no friends. You know that he is He is the one that, that When all things have boiled over That he maintains Your peace And your joy You know he's your strength And he's your source But that's not my question this morning Brothers and sisters my question this morning that God has placed on my spirit is, what is it? What is it that I could, 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 could refer to God as when it comes to my life? And then I reviewed the text. And I tried to, to get into the spirit of these Israelites. And what their perception of this breaded like substance that fell to the ground from the heavens. I wanted to, I wanted to walk in their shoes. I wanted to, 
I wanted to, to, to feel that sense of surprise. Uh, that sense of, uh, 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 of just being baffled with the understanding of what is it? And as the Holy Spirit walked me through the text, the Holy Spirit set me into their positioning of receiving it from their own eyes. The Holy Spirit gave me my answer. What is it? It's a miracle. And that's what God is. God is miracle. God is miracle for, 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 for when we think about what we used to be to, to where he's picked us up and, and, and he, he's brought a, a, a re redeeming spirit to our souls. He's miracle. He's miracle when we, we think about all of the wrong turns that we may have made in life and through his grace and his mercy we're still here. He's miracle. When we think about uh, this, this, this dreaded corona that's all over our land right now and, and we're, we're seeking wisdom from God to be able to, to cover ourselves and cover our homes and, 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 and listen to God as much as we can so we can gain all the knowledge that is needed. But still, as we look around this morning with breath in our bodies, he's miracle. Brothers and sisters, if you just look over the definition, the definition of miracle says that it's an unexplainable event, that even the natural and the scientific cannot make sense of. So therefore, it is defined as divine agency. Let me say that once again. Miracle. The sure definition of miracle is an unexplainable event that cannot be categorized either on the natural side, it can't be categorized on the scientific understanding it's divine. It is a divine, supernatural understanding. God is miracle. Brothers and sisters, as I, as I just reflect on a lot of the, the, the shortcomings of my life, I reflect on a lot of times when, when maybe I didn't have the confidence to to go forward. I reflect on the times when I just was not submitting to God and listening to God and, and allowing myself to fall in God's will that he was so patient with me. Uh, that's a miracle. That he was so loving of even the things that I was doing wrong. That's a miracle. That even he said that, that, that if you will just hold on for a little while longer, if you will just submit to me and rebuke the devil, then the devil shall flee. He's a miracle. Brothers and sisters, I know this morning that we, we got a lot of ways of, of, of labeling God. We got, we got so many different ways of giving him glory by what we refer to him as on a daily basis, but, but the one I'm hung on this morning is, what is it? He's a miracle. So, brothers and sisters, when I, when I looked over this scripture, I got into a, an understanding that they actually saw it, recognized it, but did not proclaim it as a miracle. They saw it falling from the heavens. They recognized it being a, a texture of, 
of honey, waffle-like viewing with a coriander, coriander, or a coriander seed, with a coriander seed kind of presentation. They saw it. It says it in the Bible. They recognized it in terms of its 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 location of direction. Uh, they recognized it in terms of uh, when the dew dried up. But they did not proclaim it for what it really was. It was a miracle from the Lord. And brothers and sisters, this morning I I I, I would just want to to dare you in the spirit, to dare you with those three T's that always justify God's miracle. Dare you in the spirit with those three T's, those T's of, 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 of you have to try him. You have to try him to understand a, a miraculous thing can occur in your life. You got to try him to understand that where you may be and it may look bleak and it may not look like there is an ending in sight. Uh, you got to try him to get into your miracle. And then, oh, brothers and sisters, I dare you with the second T. That second T is you got to trust him. Oh, you got to trust him that even on some of the days when you know the devil is attacking you and that the, the devil is trying to, to bring you down to such a level of defeat that you, you're struggling to hear from God. But you got to rule out what the devil's trying to place on your spirit and you got to trust him. You got to trust him. You got to you got to be able to try him, but you got to be able to trust him. And then, oh brothers and sisters, I dare you with this last T of dare. This last T of dare is you got to thank him. Oh, I'm not talking about thanking him when the miracle comes. Oh, I'm not talking about thanking him when it when you get that gift wrapped of of an unexpected surprise and the miracles that you're foots and is at your doorstep and the miracle has taken place in your body and the miracle has taken place in your home. I'm talking about you got to thank him before you ever get your miracle. Come on, somebody. You got to try him. You got to trust him. And you got to thank him. I want to feed this morning, brothers and sisters, I want to feed this morning uh, on, on the text. I want to I want to understand and, 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 and I want to revisit, if you will. I want to revisit verse number 12. Verse number 12, God says, I, I've heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at the twilight you will eat meat and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Verse 12 says, then you will know that I am the Lord, your God. Now God is, God is telling Moses and his big brother Aaron, he's telling them that I, I know all about it. I know all about the discontent. I know all about the, the, the grumblings and the, and the lack of trust in my power. God says I know all about it. But if you will tell them, you, you tell them, you tell them, Moses, you tell them that it's coming. The miracle's on the way. Now, family, we understand that a lot of times if we just look through Scripture, sometimes Moses had a, had a hang-up on, on talking in front of people. Sometimes he would either use his big brother Aaron to, to kind of speak the, speak the language of direction for him. But God's told Moses, he says, you tell them that the miracle shall show up in the morning. I want to I wanna proceed here, family. I want to proceed, if I could, on, on verses uh, 13 and 14. Verses 13, it says that, that evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. Verse 14 says, when the dew was gone, 
then flakes like frost on the ground appear on the desert floor. Now, brothers and sisters, if we think about the, the description of this, when we think about the description of, of what they're seeing, you would be able to understand that, that, that in the biblical days, the quail was easy to come by. You would be able to, just through scripture, to understand that, that, that when God said he's sending the meat, he's sending the quail, uh, that did not move them. That did not shake their spirits. That did not give them any more sense of trust in God uh, than it did before the fact that they were not eating. Uh, the, the, the quail was something that was readily accessible. But if you look there at verse 15, it says, When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? They're referring about this matter. They're referring to this manna that now is dropped on the ground, it's dried up, it's a, the dew form has evaporated, but now they're, 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 they're puzzled as to what is it and where did it come from. And brothers and sisters, this morning, that's happening a lot of our lives. Uh, we, we look around sometimes throughout the week, uh, we'll get a, 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 a phone call, we'll get an we'll encouragement of a word, we'll get a, someone who just maybe saw us uh, in and out on the streets uh, and someone told us, don't give up, don't quit, God is still in your corner. We, 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 we understand that those are those what is it moments. We understand, brothers and sisters, we understand, family, that what is it is the miracle of God. What is it? He's miracle. I want to proceed, brothers and sisters. I want to, I want to dive back into this, brothers and sisters. I think this is going to be good for the spirit this morning. But, but, but if we look, brothers and sisters, I want, to, I want to look through the remainder of this text and I want to I want to read it just so I can revisit what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. It said in verse sixteen, it says, "This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent." Brothers and sisters, if I can just hang a comma right there and tell you that omer is. It's weighed, it's gauged at to almost nine and a half cups. Uh, so, so, so Moses is making it very clear that we got more than enough, but, but I only want you to take enough for each individual person in your home. Uh, if you look down further there in, in verse 17, the Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the Omar, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses says to them, no one is to keep any of it until the morning. Brothers and sisters, that's again talking about just trying God and thanking him, thanking him before the miracle comes again. That speaks to the point of just thanking him. I got what I need right now, God. I got my roof over my head, God. I, I, I may not have the same finances that I had once this corona came, but I got enough to, to pay my bills. I got enough to keep some food on my table. And, oh, God, I'm not going to get beside myself and God and be unthankful to you, Lord. I'm going to thank you right now. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. Come on, somebody. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, what is it when, when you can sit down there and, and, and just spend time with the Lord and say, God, uh, things have changed in my life. God, I, I, I understand that there's trying to be attacks on my body. I understand that they're trying to attack my marriage. I understand that the, that the, that the evil spirits are trying to attack my children, God, but, but God, I'm going to thank you right now because as I look around right now, God, everything seems to be okay and in order. Everything seems to be, oh God, where, where I know I'm covering all of my faculties, God. I'm covering all of my responsibilities, God. I'm covering everything that you have entrusted me with, Lord. So as of right now, God, I'm not worried about tomorrow. Right now, God, I'm going to thank you before the next miracle. 
Brothers and sisters, I want to, I just want to show you that sometimes, sometimes we, we don't have an understanding of God's miracle. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we don't want to have an understanding of when he sends that miracle, how he wants you to, to hold that miracle spiritually tight. But also, he wants you to trust him to do it again. Look, if you will, brothers and sisters, at verse 20. Verse 20, it says, However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until the morning. But it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Brothers and sisters, that's, that's the Holy Spirit speaking this morning loudly. The Holy Spirit is speaking this morning so loudly that, that you got to trust God with that he's giving you more than enough. You got to trust him that you don't have to, to attack your, uh, your, your enemies or you don't have to attack uh, 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 folk around you just so you can feel lifted up in the spirit. You can feel like you somebody. You can, you can feel like God is using you. You don't have to do that. You've been given more than enough. He's done so many miracles in your life. I mean, if you just look around, uh, 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 we can sum it up uh, just over a, a, a viewing of your life by calling everything that you've been through, everything that, that has tried to kill you, every person that has tried to backstab you, every, every situation has, that has tried to be a trap by the devil, and you're still here. You're still strong. You're still giving God glory this morning. You're still giving God praise this morning. You're still able to worship and call out his holy name and say, thank you, Jesus. You're a miracle. Come on, somebody. The miracle. Moses made it very clear that you show lack of trust. You show lack of trust when God has follow through on the miracle and you get to the point in your spirit where you feel that the miracle cannot happen again and brothers and sisters you know when you look over in the, the book of Mark in the book of Mark we find Jesus Jesus doing a miracle in the book of Mark, we find Jesus doing a miracle with a man who has leprosy. He's doing a miracle. This leprosy is such a horrific disease. It's, it's this scaly type puffiness and swelling of the skin, the eyes, the body. This leprosy is it, it, it's, it's just one of those, those diseases that brings about so much destruction and pain all at the same time. It even speaks to, to the, the pain level of leprosy sometimes becomes so much pain that the body can become numb. It's a, it's a disease that that brings about destruction. But when you look at this parable, Jesus heals this man. He heals this man with leprosy. But as he's healing this man with leprosy, he tells him to first go give glory in the spiritual realm. Go see the priest. But don't tell him that I gave the miracle. Go give glory and a spiritual understanding, but don't tell them that I did the miracle. And brothers and sisters, this man did just the opposite. This man, he, he pulled up his laptop computer. He got online to social media. He, 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 he got on to Facebook. He got on to Twitter. Uh, he, he, he got on every social media account that he had because he wanted to gloat in his miracle. He wanted everybody 
to know that, 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 that God has been so good to him from where he was and to where God has bought him with this miracle healing that he wanted folk to know about it. We got to be very careful, brothers and sisters. We got to be very careful because sometimes you can, you can spoil your miracle. Sometimes you can spoil your miracle, brothers and sisters, because if we just look at the patterns of what this man did is that he got what he asked for. He got what he had been praying about. He got what had been a struggle over his life for so many years. He got his, he got his miracle. He got his calling. He, 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 he received God's love over his life, but instead of him going and doing a spiritual thing, he went and did the fleshly. Thing. Brothers and sisters, when I, when I looked over this story, when I looked over this parable, I, 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 I had the understanding, I had the understanding that, that God says that, that a miracle is, is, is just a phone call away. It's just asking God that, that God, I got something in my body that the doctor says that they don't have a cure for, but, but I understand, God, what your strength says, God. I understand, God, what it says in, in, the, in, the, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18. I understand, God, that, it, that, that what it says that is impossible with man is possible with you. I understand, Father God, that, that if I just look over in the book of Acts, when I look in the book of Acts, chapter 19, I understand, God, that, that what you said through Paul, you did some miraculous things. You said through Paul there were some extraordinary things that equated to a miracle. So I understand, God, that, that my miracle is just a phone call or prayer away. But brothers and sisters, when you get that miracle, you want to bring that miracle back to God first. Bring it to him so he gets the glory. So he gets your praise and he gets your worship because it was him, brothers and sisters, that loved you so much. Oh, it wasn't your family, it wasn't your friends, it, it wasn't your, your, your associates, it wasn't, it wasn't the people that you work with, uh, it, it, it wasn't those who, who pretend that they're in your corner and they're really waiting for you to fall down on your face. God said it wasn't any of them, it was a, a spiritual miracle. And so, brothers and sisters, this morning, as I prepare for my clothes, I asked myself that question, what is it, what is it that God is in my life? And brothers and sisters, as I, as I reflect back on Jesus at the cross, at the cross there were so many miracles that took place. There were so many miracles that were, that were understood by his crucifixion. Uh, the first miracle was that, that Jesus had enough power in his hand to call about 72,000 angels. He had enough power in his hands to call about 72,000 angels to stop this crucifixion. But he didn't. All oh, the miracles. Brothers and sisters, that, that he allowed himself to be victimized at the cross. He allowed himself to die at the cross, oh, oh brothers and sisters, so that we would have eternal life. Thank God for his miracle. And then, brothers and sisters, uh, the scripture says that he spent two days in a borrowed tomb. Two days in the borrowed tomb, brothers and sisters, because on that third day is when we got the biggest miracle. We got the biggest miracle, brothers and sisters, because on the third day they said that he rose up with unexplainable power in his hand. Come on, somebody. This morning, brothers and sisters, he's still on the throne. This morning, brothers and sisters, he still has your miracle. This morning, brothers and sisters, he just wants, a, he wants you to reach out with prayer. 
He wants you to ask for your miracle. He's not worrying about what the doubters say and what the naysayers are telling you and what doctors may be saying and what this coronavirus may be trying to indicate. He's not worried about that. He's just worried about you submitting and say, God, I need my miracle. My Lord, I need my miracle. So brothers and sisters, as I prepare for my clothes, as always, I would ask you, if you don't know Jesus Christ for yourself, if you haven't had a chance to, th to try them three T's, then three T's of trying him, trusting him, and thanking him just for being God. I ask you, brothers and sisters, this morning, if you're not in that space, that, that it's, a, it's, a, it's a great place to be. We're in some troubled times right now. It's no different. It's no, it's no different than, than the other troubles we've had in our lives. It's just that this storm here is hovering. And so right now, we need a miracle. God, we need a miracle. So brothers and sisters, if you don't know him for yourself, I ask that if you would just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord and Savior, that he said he can do what he said he can do, and he can do it. He's a miracle. I pray, brothers and sisters, that this message this morning touch your spirit. Pray that it bless you. And I pray that you will go out and become a blessing to others. Have a great day.